In this video, we're going to discuss the impacts that climate changes uh, have on ecosystems and biodiversity. To begin, we're going to set the scene. The climate change itself will be described. And on this graph, we see at the top warming uh, in the past and uh, warming that is forecasted for the future. Now, when the map is red, it means that warming uh, was more intense. And on the top graph, we see that over the last 100 years, uh, the temperatures have risen by one degree. And at the bottom, we have two scenarios on the left-hand side, the greenhouse effect uh, gas emission scenario, which is relatively limited with a two degree warming. And on the right-hand side, we have uh, the scenario where there are a lot of emissions, and obviously the warming is much greater, and we uh, talk about even more than six degrees uh, of warming. On this graph, we see the impact that this uh, warming uh, is having uh, on species. We know that when temperatures are too high, species will move towards the poles to move away from the heat. And when temperatures are too cold, they move to the equator. Now, considering uh, that uh, the warming has been uh, one degree, we can wonder whether the species have moved towards the poles. Here we have species living in the uh, ocean and the sea and the movements over the last uh, few decades. And we see that they have moved, sometimes over very long distances. The highest point refers to phytoplankton, and we see that the phytoplankton has uh, traveled more than 400 kilometers per decade in order to uh, move away from the heat. The other species uh, move less, but we see that most of them have tried to respond to the climate changes by traveling to the poles or towards the poles. Obviously, this is going to change the species distribution and ecosystems of functioning. There will be also consequences observed on those species that have trouble moving. On this slide, for instance, we see that the uh, most impacted uh, ecosystems will be coral reefs. Corals are tiny animals which uh, build very small shells with the calcium carbonate, and the accumulation of those cells, shells creates the uh, coral, except that when the water becomes acid, and uh, we know that uh, CO2 emissions in the atmosphere cause the uh, oceans to become more acid, the uh, corals uh, have trouble surviving, and when the uh, oceans become more acid, uh, the uh, corals become white and uh, they tend to uh, dive. And over the last uh, decades, we have seen coral reefs become white, and we see also here the Australian coral reef, where a uh, clear decline has been observed in uh, the uh, uh, development of the coral with uh, healthy, uh, small organisms. Some ecosystems are extremely vulnerable, and uh, acidification of the ocean is definitely going to have an impact on the most vulnerable species and also on the fisheries that rely on uh, the coral reefs. This is also going to have an impact, uh, increasing storms on the coast, because normally storms are mitigated by the presence of the coral reef as a protective barrier. Now, let us look at Earth ecosystems and species living on land. We also see here that there are differences in the uh, species' capacity to move when facing climate changes. Here we have all kinds of uh, organisms with a different capacity to move. At the top of the graph, we see trees and herbaceous plants. And in the middle, we have large mammals. Plants and trees have trouble moving. They can move uh, less than 10 kilometers per decade, whereas mammals can move relatively quickly. At the bottom of the graph, we have an estimate made by researchers of the speed at which the climate 
moves over the uh, surface of the earth and it provides an indication of the speed at which the species must uh, travel to find a more favorable climate. On the left-hand side of the graph, we see that if the global warming is associated with relatively low CO2 emissions, this is the RCP 2.6 scenario, at the end of this century, the uh, species will have traveled very uh, short distances. They will not need to uh, move much, and they will have no difficulties following the climate to find a more favorable climate. However, if we look on the right-hand side, where greenhouse effect em emissions uh, are very um, are substantial, the scenario is the RCP 8.5, we see that the speed at which the climate moves over the uh, surface of the earth is greater than the speed at which trees or herbaceous plants are capable of moving. So what happens when the uh, some of the species, especially plants, are not capable of moving fast enough? Some species will die, quite simply, in the uh, part of their distribution area where the temperatures are too high or when the, there is a drought. This is uh, something that being observed, trees die because of droughts or high temperatures. On this graph, we see observations made over all the places, all the distribution areas where trees are dying across the globe. And if we uh, focus on this problem and we think about the future, Scientists have uh, made models predicting the future of trees. Some models have been uh, devised in order to observe the impact that climatic changes is going to, are going to have on uh, some trees. For instance, here we have the example of the Scots pine, a very important type of tree for forestry and the forestry industry. There are five different models here, and each of the model at the bottom of the slide was used to predict the impact of climatic changes on this particular type of pine, the Scots pine. Now, when the maps are red, it shows that the uh, climate between now and 2050 will become uh, very unfavorable. Where the map is green, it means that the climate is still favorable for the Scots pine. In the mountains, the uh, climate becomes more favorable for Scots pines, whereas in the plains, the uh, climate will become unfavorable for the growth of Scots pine, except that for forest, the forestry industry, it is probably uh, wiser not to plant Scots pine any longer because it takes 50 years before the tree can be cut down. Unsurprisingly, this will change the physiognomy of our forests, and not only the trees are in danger, but also all the species that rely on trees for their living. We can also look at the impact on the sweet water ecosystems, which, as we all know, are very sensitive to climate changes, especially in uh, Mount, in the mountains. We know that glaciers are shrinking. If they shrink just a little bit, this will increase the flow in the rivers. But if they do shrink a lot, this ends up decreasing the flow in the rivers. And this graph shows that if the uh, watershed is no longer covered enough with glaciers, this decreases the specific wealth of the rivers depending on those glaciers uh, to live. In conclusion, one can see quite clearly that global warming has already started. It's on, it's underway, and uh, species have started moving to follow the climate changes, and the models show that species will move uh, even more with the climate change. Now, what matters most here is that if we can decrease or mitigate the greenhouse effect gas emissions, the effect uh, would, should not be too catastrophic, but if we do nothing to mitigate, uh, reduce the greenhouse effect gas emissions, many species will not be in a capacity to move fast enough to follow the climate changes, and therefore this will have an impact on biodiversity and on the ecosystems.